Hey guys, what's up? Thanks for watching this video. And in this video, what I want to talk about is the top 10 programming languages that I think um, anybody should be learning if they want to be a programmer in 2016 and beyond. Um, so it's not necessarily just a look at where all the jobs are. It's more of an opinion on um, where the, the industry is headed and where I feel like um, you know the, the different paradigms um, should be uh, as far as your 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 toolbox your arsenal of uh, programming languages and uh, like I said paradigms that, that you should know to be a well-rounded programmer uh, so we're gonna start with number 10 uh, number 10 on the list is the C programming language um, it is you know the godfather of all programming languages out there I don't think it's the best first language to learn uh, there's no reason why you can't learn uh, you know the basics of C using something like Python C sharp or C++ you don't need C to do C++ um, but C is still in, involved in basically everything so if you want to be a true hardcore hacker um, learning the C language is, is never going to be a bad thing uh, it's number 10 on the list though just because C is so verbose and so low level that um, typically you're not going to get a, an industry job and, and you know, at least with regards to web and where things are headed going into the future um, I, I feel like C is going to be a little bit less uh, on the lesser end than the other languages in this list uh, but definitely C is a good language to learn um, and if you've done C Sharp or JavaScript or Python or any of these other higher level languages built on top of C then you've, you've pretty much already done C programming so the syntax will be relatively similar you're just in for a lot of headaches with memory leaks and um, and verbosity of writing C if you go with that route. Alright guys, number nine on this list is uh, Go Go's um, Golang or Go programming language. And the reason for that is also the same reasons why I mentioned C. Go is a very low level verbose language that is gaining a lot of traction. Um, as far as like server-side technology or systems level language um, Google is slowly incorporating it throughout their entire stack um, from YouTube to old C++ libraries that they used to use um, Go was invented by a lot of guys over at, at Go um, as well as the godfather uh, and creator of, of the C language himself Ken Thompson so definitely an awesome language to learn and I would put that ahead of C at this point because if you're gonna go systems level and low level you might as well go with Go and you won't have to deal with the garbage collection. I would imagine we're going to see a, a major uptick in Google Jobs, uh, Google Go anyway. Um, but we're probably still a couple years off. But you might as well jump in the in the water uh, before it gets warm, and that way um, you'll be you'll be ready when uh, the explosion happens and there's a lot more demand for Google uh, Go jobs. I say Google Go. It's really not. You know, it's a it's an open source language. But Go um, was created by the Google guys. Um, it was kind of a company level project, but it's it can be used by any company. It doesn't have to have an affiliation with Google. All right, number eight on this list is PHP. Uh, PHP is a web-based language. It was built specifically for the web. It can be used for other things besides the web, but that's really asinine in, in the corporate world. Um, it's it's really just a PHP engine. It's what powers WordPress and millions and millions of blogs out there. So there is a ton of demand for PHP. Um, it can be a real ugly bastard at times. It was written by a guy who um, is a self-proclaimed uh, non-coder, a guy that didn't doesn't really like to code, um, as opposed to like you know, geniuses that um, or like you know, math whizzes, like the the guy that invented Python or, or the guy that um, masterminded the C-sharp language. Um, with PHP, it, it's a different story. So, you know, sometimes people refer to it as like having unique tools to do certain things. Like one guy referred to it as like, you know, basically a toolbox and you, you pull out a hammer and it's got a claw on both ends and you're like, well, it's kind of useful. You know, I, I can kind of hit things with it sideways, but um, didn't really expect to have claws on both ends. But that, that's typically um, some of the complaints that come from PHP is like just kind of weird uh, variances and, and not a whole lot of I guess foresight into um, additions to the language and um, and its biggest issue being security issues um, mainly due to uh, inexperienced coders since PHP is a very easy language to jump into 
uh, non-coders, non-programmers can quickly get a website up and running, even though there could be like major security holes with the website. And that's been known to plague uh, PHP sites in the past. So it gets a, a lot of negative uh, publicity for that. But so many websites are written in PHP because it is an easy language. It's a web-based language. It's kind of like a successor to Perl. And Perl used to run the web in the 90s. PHP kind of took a lot of that. And, um, and Python and Ruby are, are taking even more uh, from PHP now. Um, so that's why PHP is number eight on this list. But uh, still a, a great language to learn, especially if you need a job, because there's going to be a lot of jobs out there in PHP. Number seven on this list is Ruby, and the reason why Ruby is so popular is because of its web framework, Ruby on Rails, which was originally what Twitter was set up under. Uh, Ruby on Rails still powers a lot of very successful, very large websites, and uh, it was really the first to mastermind the entire web framework uh, as as we see it now. So um, a lot of uh, alternatives like Django and um, ASP.NET and um, really Ruby paved the way for a lot of the features that you see in those modern web frameworks now. I mean, they kind of, um, they just, they have a lot of uh, magic included, so it's like a all-inclusive type framework. So uh, one of the complaints is that there is uh, too much black box magic going on underneath the scenes, but it's also very easy to install a gem and um, get your website up and running with the latest features that you could need. So it's got a huge community, a lot of, a ton of Ruby on Rails jobs. Um, the reason why Ruby is all the way down on number seven, though, is because it's really um, just seen as a as a web um, language. So uh, there is not much demand for this language outside of Ruby on Rails. So if you're not if you're going to be in like a GUI development uh, or basically like a Windows um, uh, any sort of non web based uh, language or approach, even like you know data crunching and stuff like that, you're typically not going to see that done in Ruby. You're going to see uh, other languages that we have on the list here so anyway Ruby is still a great language to learn especially if you're looking for a job in the web development field using Ruby on Rails alright number six on this list is uh, Swift which is the newest replacement for Objective C which is Apple's programming language of choice which uh, works just out of the box works everything on uh, Mac iOS iPod Apple's obviously a huge company, one of the largest companies in the world, might even be the largest company by market cap at the time of this video. I haven't looked it up recently, but uh, they're obviously a huge company. And I'll give you a little hint into the remainder of this list that, that Objective-C is not on it. Um, and the reason why is, like I said, there's still a lot of um, you know, Objective-C demand, obviously, but Swift is looking to be like the uh, Python of C, uh, but basically the Python of of uh, Objective C, which they call Swift, so um, it's very Python-like, very easy to use, much less verbose than um, than C, uh, Objective C, and I think we're we're going to see in the future more and more jobs uh, transitioning from the Objective C environments as more libraries and things get ported over to Swift, and you're going to see a lot more demand uh, in Swift and and specifically uh, just Swift. So anyway, that is why um, that is number six on this list. So obviously Apple speaks for itself. It's a huge, huge um, environment with a lot of potential for jobs and future growth. All right, number five on this list is C Sharp. And we just went from Swift with Apple now to C Sharp. And the reason why C Sharp is so popular is because it is the language of the .NET framework. Um, which is the Microsoft proprietary uh, systems technology. So anything Microsoft from um, forms to websites to the Windows Phone, um, C Sharp is going to be your go-to language. And um, that is, uh, once again, it speaks for itself. Uh, the net profits of Microsoft, even with all the negative publicity at times, is still like astronomically high. I believe they clear like $20 billion in profit every year or something ridiculous like that. Still a humongous, um, humongous company, one of the most reputable uh, and most distinguished brands of, of our history. So, um, not going anywhere anytime soon. And with the power of Microsoft behind it, C Sharp is still going to be poised to be a, a very good language to learn uh, in the corporate world uh, going forward. Now, if they had better options for hosting uh, and maybe um, with their open source. Um, open sourcing of their technologies that they've been announcing over the last couple of years, 
uh, we may see more growth into like uh, non Microsoft operating systems which would be uh, a breath of fresh air so that Windows developers can actually move outside of the Windows de um, platform and not just not be so restrictive uh, restricted to just uh, one particular operating system which is really the downfall of C Sharp is that it really only works with Windows so um, it's number five on this list uh, just because Microsoft is so large number four on this list is C++ and C++ has seen a huge um, rejuvenation and the amount of uh, followers it's been receiving with its newest C++ 11 standards it's really looking to standardize everything about C++ so that it's much easier for uh, new developers to come along and understand what and how they should be coding C++ because it's such an old language dating back to the 80s and it's such a um, like tacked on language where they just tack random shit on here and there that it gets a really bad rap um, for like outdated documentation and just really just mind-boggling confusion about how to do like certain you know mundane tasks and um, it can be very very difficult it doesn't have any sort of uh, memory management or anything like that so um, it's very difficult to jump into but with C++ uh, 11 it is making it a little bit easier for newer newcomers to join and uh, jump in the warm waters of C++ because there are still a ton of jobs out there for C++ game engines are almost entirely written in C++ so any sort of computer gaming unity unreal um, they all use C++ and uh, it is definitely not going anywhere so uh, any sort of graphics physics engines or anything that, that you'll see out there it's going to have some sort of C++ wrapper for it um, or directly uh, it'd be a C++, C++ library so anyway um, that is definitely not going any anywhere anytime soon and that's why it's number four on this list All right, number three on this list is Python, and the reason why Python is emerging as number three is it's now the number one uh, most taught programming language, introductory language, taught at um, top IT schools around the nation, uh, around the United States and worldwide. Um, Carnegie Mellon, uh, MIT, Stanford, uh, Caltech, all, all these major IT firms are all teaching uh, Python as the number one introductory language. It's also emerged as a uh, very good web alternative to something like PHP or where, per or where um, Perl used to dominate. Python is now eating their lunch with um, web-based um, sites. So the Django web framework is arguably, um, well, it's not as popular as Ruby on Rails or as widely used, but it, it's certainly just as well regarded as Ruby on Rails. Uh, it powers sites like, um, like Discuss, uh, Pinterest, Instagram some major websites are using Python. Uh, Python is still heavily used by Google, um, Gmail, and uh, YouTube. So uh, Python is not going anywhere anytime soon. Uh, there's been an explosion of jobs and then um, the biggest industry that it, it's in right now is also bioinformatics. It's the um, go-to language for any sort of uh, biologist and, and huge number crunching with um, with, with different libraries that Python has and the reason why is it's so much easier for a data scientist to pick up Python than it is for them to pick up C sharp and um, Python is fast enough for them to be able to do their number crunching and, and make their jobs a, a whole lot easier so Python is is well ahead of Ruby in this regard just because uh, there may be more of Ruby on Rails jobs um, Python's growing in, in multiple industries and doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon All right, number two on this list is going to be Java, which is the programming language for native Android development. So Java is not just big in its own right. It's like the number one language used on like DVD players, Blu-ray players, and embedded systems, servers, GUIs, web-based, uh, anything, um, search engines. Basically, Java is in everything. It has the most jobs. There's, there's a ton of Java de demand out there. And since it's Android's native environment, so its entire um, SDK is written in Java, um, it is definitely number two on this list for jobs, for future, for anything. If you know Java, you'll have a job. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best, but um, it, is, it is head and shoulders um, in more demand than, than the other languages that I've mentioned so far when it comes to actual jobs.
right, and the number one uh, language on this list, and for good reason, is JavaScript. JavaScript seems like a, a boring number one, but it is by far and away the most important language for web-based development. Pretty much everything in the programming IT world nowadays is web-based. Um, it's used in conjunction with any sort of back-end server-side technology that you want to use, whether it be PHP, Python, Ruby, C Sharp, Java. JavaScript is going to be used in all of that stuff. Uh, JavaScript is now also emerging as a full uh, server-side technology as well, and not just a um, a browser-based language. So um, we're quickly moving into an almost entire uh, JavaScript UI, and uh, it can be uh, very difficult uh, to learn um, in in some cases. I mean it, the beginner concepts are, are, are easy but JavaScript has a lot of uh, very unique behavior compared to other languages and um, a lot of people do overlook it. Um, popular libraries like the jQuery library or more modern frameworks like Angular, um, Backbone, Knockout, those are all JavaScript based um, frameworks. You also have um, tools like uh, React which is still just a um, JavaScript framework so uh, it's really just JavaScript, JavaScript, JavaScript everywhere you learn or everywhere you turn uh, and it should be everywhere you learn too so uh, that actually worked out so anyway if you want to get in web development definitely learn JavaScript it's probably the single most important language you could possibly learn uh, right now alright guys thanks for watching this list and please subscribe let me know if you disagree, call me a jerk, whatever. People are very passionate about their languages. I try to be as independent as possible. So uh, I've, you know, I've been in the IT world for quite some time now, so these are just my own personal opinions, and um, I could be wrong. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.